A very good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of AISSMSS Institute of Information Technology and the Innovations Incubation Entrepreneurship Development Cell of our college, I Rajesh Kamath, would like to welcome you all to this webinar, Problem Solving and Ideation Workshop. Now I would like to introduce our today's speaker. Our guest speaker is Mr. Sachin Kumbhoje. Mr. Sachin is a healthcare professional who did his post-graduation in pharmacy and MBA in HR and marketing. He spent few years in the pharmaceutical industry working in technology transfer. Because he wanted to start something of his own, he then happily dropped out of PhD and pursued MBA to begin his entrepreneurial journey. In 2015, he was a part of Infosys Foundation's Global Business Foundation Skills Program which was a turning point to kickstart his own startup named OpEx, Operational Excellence, in 2016. For his initiative to promote Make in India, he got recognition from the Prime Minister's office. With his bootstrapped startup, he could manage to impact more than 50,000 students and professionals for startup and skill development in five years. Today, along with OpEx, he leads several other ventures like Plan B, SIBIC and Satvik. All his ventures are humanity plus companies to take humanity to the next level. His vision is to solve India's unemployment crisis through balancing job creators and job seekers. Recently, he has received Gaurav Puraskar from Maharashtra's leading press media, Sakal. I welcome you, sir. I request, sir, to proceed with the session. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just to check the uh, audio and video connection. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Just a minute. I'll just share my PowerPoint presentation. Oh, yes, sir. It's visible. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. So thank you so much everyone for having me here and thank you so much ma'am for this uh, quick introduction. And uh, today the topic for this particular uh, session under your uh, IIC Institutions Innovation Council uh, for the, you know, uh, renowned institution, renowned brand AISSMS. Uh, ideation and problem solving for uh, startups uh, before I actually deep dive into what exactly is, you know, uh, ideation, how to ideate a solution or how to ideate a startup idea to, to begin with uh, any kind of, you know, startup or, or kind of entrepreneurship journey for anyone. Maybe it is applicable for faculty. It is applicable for the youngsters. Uh, I actually wanted to share two to three things here. Number one, uh, the kind of problem solving approach which we have at the institution level or at academic level that is something we innovate we you know have uh, spend time and money and energy in our research activities and once we are done with our innovation part then we figure out who is our customer or where exactly is our customer right now so that's number one approach where we basically have that random innovation kind of approach. But the idea here, which I'm going to share you, the kind of methodology which we need to utilize or the kind of methodologies which I have utilized for all my three startups is basically a targeted innovation. Targeted innovation, you might, you know, uh, consider this as the fancy word or even the students can consider this as something like a rocket science or likewise but targeted research or targeted innovation is something where before you start your laboratory scale research or before you actually start working on any kind of innovation any kind of research you first reach out to the market you have to interact with the customers you have to you know talk with them you need to you know understand their pain points then you have to come back and then ideate a solution for those problems that is nothing but something which you can consider as a uh, reverse engineering as well where you first reach to your market 
first you reach to your customer you ask them their pain points then you come back and then you start a startup likewise so that or basically both these approaches we are actually you know uh, considering for this initial part of our session number two thing is we always think that the innovation is something like you know we 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 are you know talking about like many of the students are still think like innovation is something where i need to you know innovate something like like elon musk or something like that no it's absolutely fine the terminology is like innovation or or even uh, patents right these are the terminologies where even many of the students they have something in their mind but they hesitate they hesitate to you know connect with the with the mentors or professors because they they fail to understand that potential of their innovation right to make it more simple india have a talent where we have something we have something which us or silicon valley they call this something as innovation but we call that something as jugad right so there are multiple you know youngsters maybe you know irrespective of whether they are from engineering management you know nursing pharma architecture any any kind of you know domain but they have this particular skill where they can actually innovate a solution for a problem that is what i actually try to you know tell you like if you see any kind of problem you need to have that approach to solve that problem immediately that is something where you can have targeted innovation you can connect this targeted innovation with jugad as well only thing is somewhere we have failed to build a commercially scalable model of our whatever jugads we have right you might you may have seen the the movie like padman or you may have you know heard about the entire story of padman that is something which is actually happening at our grassroots level right many of you may be you know a die hard fan of shark tank india you may have seen multiple episodes or almost all the episodes of shark tank india there you may have seen that jugadu kamlesh from malegao right so he have he have created something which can actually disrupt the you know uh, the the entire ecosystem right so that is based on the existing pain points what are the existing pain points and based on that we have created a solution so that is something our approach should be needs to be different the second approach we need to choose that second approach right and third thing which i am you know going to share you is it's not about just a product i am not here to you know just share you like how to innovate a product or how to innovate a process because you all are engineers right probably in the entire you know session in the entire room here i probably i may the only person who is non engineer right so i am basically a healthcare professional i have you know uh, a zero knowledge about any kind of engineering stuff like that okay because uh, i i decided during my 10th like whatever i'll do i will not you know pick engineering as my career because i was very poor at maths and certainly i rather see right now during my last 7 8 years career in startups as engineers are the you know real potential people who are you know disrupting anything right being a healthcare professional on everyday basis we need a support we need you know the technology mentoring from the engineers so many of my you know colleagues many of my even for for few of our startups they, the co founders even many of my mentors are basically engineers the point here is as an engineer it is not always that you have to innovate a product it is not always to innovate something for electric vehicles or something for smart watches or something which is into artificial intelligence no innovation cannot be always in terms of product it is not always a product innovation it can be also process innovation right it can be also business model innovation you don't have to innovate a product you don't have to even innovate a process but you can eventually innovate a business model for example paytm right so paytm have you know not innovated any kind of product or process what they innovated is a process sorry a business model 
right? Same is the case with Ola and Uber. Same is the case with Zomato and Swiggy. Same is the case with Paytm. Same is the case with Bharat Pay. These are few of the disruptive startups who have not innovated their product or process. Their focus was on business model. Their focus was basically to innovate a business model and disrupt everything. The best example for business model innovation, which I can give you right now, one of the finest case study for India is Jio. How Jio entered in entire market and they disrupted entire telecom industry. See, that is something which we can consider as a business model innovation. So when you consider a startup, when you consider an entrepreneurship as a career, you don't have to always worry about, I have to innovate a product, a solid or a physical form of a product, no, or even, even a process. So we have product innovation, process innovation, and business model innovation, right? As I said, I'm not an engineer, but right now, whatever startups I hold, basically I have integrated many of the technologies in, in our startup for our platforms. But it is not always like, I, I have to learn, I had to learn artificial intelligence or cloud computing or machine learning, and then I have integrated all these technologies in my platform. No, I clearly outsourced whatever technologies I needed. So this is how a healthcare professional and engineers, they blended together. And now we have few, you know, interesting platforms with us. Similarly, for any engineer, no doubt, you have all that expertise which is related with your expertise which is related with your machine which is related with your you know problem solving approach right engineers are great in prototyping engineers are great in you know creating the 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 working models right but what next what next maybe today you have something in your hand maybe a prototype maybe a working model which you have created for you know 10 units 100 units but you need someone who have a sense of business who have a sense of business which can actually come into your team and can help you as far as your entire business management is concerned so product management is number one and business management is number two and it's the blend of your startup so as an engineer you can focus more on product development but as a business development, you can consider maybe a management candidate, maybe an MBA graduate as your co-founder who can look into entire business management. So you take care of product management, that is back-end operations, and your co-founder, the, the MBA graduate, can take care of your front-end operations, that is nothing but business management, because he's someone who is not into product development, who is not into prototyping or working model, who is not technically sound, but he knows everything about sales and marketing. He knows everything about accounting and finance. He knows everything about networking and people management and everything so that he can take your product to the next level, right? If you are someone who think like, if I am building this, I am the only one who can, you know, uh, uh, consider or, or uh, continue with everything, right? This will not be possible. It, it cannot be you know a one man army in any any of the startups you need someone you need co-founders you need likely minded people so that you can initiate your own journey so these are some of the basic inputs which i actually wanted to share you before i actually start this particular presentation so now my entire session will be focused on three things number one what are the different approaches of the innovation? Number two, what are the types of the innovation? And number three, and the most important part where I'm going to share you a problem statement canvas for you all. So at the end of this particular session, you can actually download this particular problem statement canvas and you can start ideating all your ideation or problem solving, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the ideas, whatever ideas you have, okay. So to begin with, just a moment. Yeah, so let me first uh, wish all the women, all the, you know, uh, women out here, a happy Women's Day, uh, being, you know, International Women's Day. Sudha Murthy ji, always, uh, you know, my inspiration, uh, almost all 
books I have read, even you know, even during my introduction, you may have heard like I completed my initial global business foundation skills program from Infosys, that too from Mysuru campus. So that was basically the CSR activity from Infosys, which is uh, being handled by directly handled by Sudha Murthy ji. So she is very close uh, to all of us, and we all should consider with pride as you know indeed a uh, uh, you know icon for as far as the woman entrepreneurship is concerned so wishing uh, everyone in the happy international women's day starting about uh, this particular session i'll be you know talking more on what are the three types of to be entrepreneurs uh, finding how to find out the pain points of the customer how to find out a solution for the problem design thinking approach types of innovation and techniques of innovation so this was something which i was you know talking about there are two ways of innovation there are two approaches of innovation number one is basically something which is happening at lab scale that is you first innovate and then find a right customer for it right so that is approach number one or number two you first find a customer a future customer and then innovate a product hello Hello. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. You are audible. Sir. Please continue. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. I have some disturbances here. Yeah. Uh, shall I shall I continue? Because I thought there are some uh, discussions going on with this regard, but I couldn't yes, get sir. it. Yes, sir. So you could continue. Yeah. yeah yes, thank sir. You. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So there are uh, normally there are two approaches for any kind of innovation. Number one, you innovate first and then find the right customer. Number two approach, which I strongly recommend based on my own experience, that is, you first find your customer, and based on his requirement based on her requirement then innovate a product i'll tell you a simple example two approaches for example now listen this carefully i'll give you an example of example of a baby diaper okay right now today right now we have a marketed you know brands like pampers and you know huggies and everything right through approach number one what you what i can do is the problem statement which I have identified is because of so much waste which is being created of used diapers. Right now, the problem is of waste management. How, if I can use a biodegradable material so that I can use this entire 100% biodegradable material for? baby diapers and then i can innovate a product and then sell it to the customer or sell it to the that particular market but because i have utilized a biodegradable material the cost which is there per unit cost which is there for any kind of diaper it is getting increased right so that is now approach number one approach number two could be First, I'll visit that customer. Now, who is the customer for a baby diaper? Obviously, the parents. So I'll, you know, uh, have interaction with many of the parents. I'll interact with them. I'll get their pain points. So the pain point which I would receive from customer, this will not be a kind of waste management kind of issue. Understand this thing parents or customers will not share you that particular issue of waste management that uh, we are using this uh, baby diapers since last one and two years and uh, how much waste have been you know created for uh, during this entire usage of the diapers no they will not talk this stuff what they will talk is right now my daily budget for diapers is say for example 2000 or 3000 rupees this is my pain point you need to create something which is a cheaper solution for this particular thing 
so that is now a problem statement from the customer so what you can innovate is instead of innovating a biodegradable uh, you know uh, uh, this thing uh, diapers instead of creating a biodegradable diapers what you can do is you will innovate maybe a reversible diaper or maybe a reusable diaper maybe a cloth based which will ultimately in a cheaper cost where the cost of 2000 or 3000 rupees will be you know directly come will to the half maybe half right also it can actually solve waste management issue as well so through second approach what you did is you first interacted with the customer you you know drill down their problem statements and then and then only you started innovating a product what happened generally is when you first take a step to innovate and then find a customer that is approach number one then what happened is we assume everything we assume that this may disrupt the market this may be a big big market size or this product may change the lives of the customer this is based on our assumption but in second approach you anyways you are reaching to the market and you are asking your future customer what exactly is looking for if he's looking for such kind of solutions you will create only those solutions where your risk is minimum your chances of getting success is higher right also there is one more advantage for approach number two is you can immediately decide the pricing strategies for your product right because you're connected anyways you're connected with the customers at least three times you have to connect with your future customer first for idea generation second for prototype validation and third for you know to actual sales of your particular product three times three times you have to connect with that future customer if you want a successful startup right and this is something which we call as a lean startup methodology right the ideation process which i follow that is lean startup methodology so what exactly is lean startup methodology that is as i said first step reach to the market then interact with the future customer now the question from your end would be market what exactly is market shall i visit to hospitals shall i visit to malls shall i visit to the the you know four wheeler companies or showrooms shall i visit to uh, the telecom companies where where should i visit what kind of market so reaching a market even before that you need to first identify your sector right suppose if i am telling you today that electric vehicles market is huge and go in detail into electric vehicles create something which is a need of elect which is a need of you know ev sector but the thing is you as a startup founder or you as an innovator have no interest in electric vehicles why should you go into ev market because i have told you because someone have told you that ev market is very big you are not going to be a part of that market no otherwise you are doing a mistake so what you really need to do here is based on your passion based on your area of interest you have to figure out your sector maybe you are a mechanical engineers mechanical engineering student but you know that fact that you have expertise in agriculture you know that fact that you are you have that expertise in food sector it is not about your qualification right because you start any business nobody will ask you for any kind of eligibility criteria or educational qualification no what they will ask you is your passion where exactly is your passion where exactly is your area of interest say for example if your area of interest is say agriculture then reach to that market talk with the farmers talk with different vendors talk with all those stakeholders who are there in agriculture market interact with your future customer now who is your future customer any company who is dealing into agriculture it can be your future customer that is something which is b2b market or b2b sales right you can even interact with the farmers even you can interact with those who basically are into veterinary medicines right because that is anyways it is connected with agriculture right healthcare plus agriculture so you can connect with these people 
and then ask them what are the real life problems which they are facing see this is the finest ideation strategy or methodology which one can have and that is known as lean startup methodology i'll recommend you a book lean startup by eric rees which you can get it through amazon or flipkart that is something a methodology which one should learn before diving into a startup right so this is something where you need to you know make a list of all their real life pain points maybe you will make a list of 100 problems of the farmers 100 problems of someone who is actually handling or doing an agriculture business say for example your area of interest is say into healthcare right what you can do is you can visit hospitals you can interact with the patients you can interact with the surgeons you can interact interact with the receptionist even you can interact with the patient's relatives ask them what are their real life problems make a list of their their problems then come back and brainstorm with your team like out of 100 problems these are 50 problems which are common everywhere this problem is there in pune this problem is there in mumbai this problem is there in ahmedabad this problem is even there at chennai so pick only those common problems right now how to choose problems out of 100 how will you differentiate or how will you you know segregate these problem statements this will not be possible like for 100 problems you're going to create 100 solutions no no absolutely no now listen carefully out of 100 problems you have to now segregate into four into four number one select only those problems who are which are most urgent and most important which are most urgent and most important number one preference number two pick those which are most urgent but not important most urgent but not important number three most important but not urgent most important but not urgent and finally the problems which does not have any urgency which does not have any importance leave those problems as it is because even we all know people are managing with that fourth category of problems which does not have any kind of urgency which does not have any kind of importance even if you you know come with a solution which can solve that fourth category wala problem that is which does not have any urgency which does not have any importance do you think that someone will pay you for your product nobody will pay you know pay you for that particular problem because that is something where people are managing people will pay you only for those problems which are of first and second category the problems which are most urgent the problems which are most important life changing problems right or life changing solutions so you need to then segregate out of whatever problems you have and that is where you need to ideate a solution right so now you have picked the problems which are into first or second category accordingly you have to ideate a solution through design thinking approach i'll i'll tell you what exactly is design thinking because design thinking is the core of ideation process right this is in front of you is a methodology but the actual problem solving skill which you can learn is through design thinking right now once you have ideated a solution for example a solution can be anything say for example you can take a simple example of your powerpoint slide changer right which which can be remotely operated okay or you can consider a, a smart watch right where you can even see your vitals like blood pressure your oxygen you can set your timer you can set your alarm everything kind of thing right so whatever solution you have you have to first build a prototype right prototype is nothing but your working model which you can actually test right so you need to build a solution or that particular prototype in a physical form which is workable right now you have to you know carry that prototype again you have to reach that customer the same customer to whom you have interacted in second step 
in second step now you have to revisit that customer hey this is something which is which i have created for your problem just use it and tell me whether it is solving your problem or not right if his problem is most urgent and most important he will use that he will use that and he will give you a feedback if he is giving you a positive feedback then this means yes your product is validated if he is giving you some inputs like are this is something like which i have to carry i need something which is convenient i need something with a good battery backup i need something which will have additional features i need something which is you know which can be used by anyone from my family something like that the your your product is good but he will give you few inputs which you have to you know uh, consider these feedbacks as you can consider feedbacks as an asset because this is something through which you can actually build your perfect product so this is how you need to collect the feedback and then you will validate your product once your product is validated then and then only launch your product in the market right don't be in hurry to launch your product in the market many of the times what happens is once you reach to the prototype you have that urgency you have that eagerness you have that you know a uh, restlessness to launch your product in the market wait have a patience first get it validated from your customer maybe you can take a sample size of 100 to 300 you have to first test them get a feedback of that and then and then only you have to you know uh, get into the market right now moving on to next there are three three types of to be entrepreneurs okay now you have to identify what is your type like you know so there are three types of to be entrepreneurs number one maybe you are a someone who comes with your own innovation something today you have with you maybe an android application maybe a tool maybe a part of any engine maybe something which can actually solve a, a pain point of waste management whatever it is right so you are someone probably which you have with your own innovation or you do not have any kind of innovation today but you know that you have that sector expertise you ask me anything from finance i can get you through you ask me anything about agriculture i know everything kind of thing so you have that expertise but you do not have a fixed idea and number 3 you do not have any innovation you do not have any sector expertise what you have is only the urge of doing the business maybe you have funds maybe 10 20 lakh rupees funds you have and you want to actually invest in any kind of business or startup but you do not have that innovation but you do not have any kind of sector expertise but you are someone who have only with the urge of business number one category you maybe you right now you have kind of any kind of innovation right now you have that innovation right so the question for you is if you are someone if you are someone with this first category of entrepreneur with their with your own innovation how good do you know customers needs so that is that is something which we have you know discussed earlier right so now you have created a product but do you know exactly the need of the customer what exactly is this right similarly does your product or service solve that need again one more thing there is a clear cut differentiation between a need and want there is a clear cut differentiation between a need and want right if you are solving the want of the customer then your positioning would be completely different if you are solving need of the customer then your positioning would be completely different your pricing strategy your branding your marketing everything will be changed everything will be changed it is based on whether it is customer's need or want right the cars like s cross brisa sias nexa cars these are under want category the cars like maruti suzuki alto wagoner these are basically need category 
there is a clear cut demarcation there is a clear cut differentiation between need and want you have to figure out whatever you have created your product whether it falls into the category of need or it is under the category of want right how much are they willing to pay you for your solution again if it is solving a need of the customer it is on urgent basis it is on importance basis so i am ready to pay you kind of thing right maybe if you have created something which is at premium level maybe middle class people will not buy that upper middle class people will not buy that but the premium class people or ultra premium kind of people they can buy your product right but the question is how much are they willing to pay you based on that you have to strategize for your pricing how much is this problem a priority to customer right there are multiple you know preferences for the problem statements which we have already seen if it is a fourth category no importance no urgency is it a priority of the customer no but if it is a urgent problem which has to be solved if it is that kind of category which is more important say i'll give you an example of a startup white hat hr you may have heard of white hat hr junior right che sal ka bachcha coding sikhega is it a priority of the customer is it a need of the customer no and that's why through the intelligent marketing strategies they are right now wish to transform their product from want category to need category like how by juice they have transformed their product from want category into need category when by juice was launched it was into want category right now it is in need category similarly it is the customer's priority which you can you know decide at the time of you know launching your own startup does it solve a significant problem so that is one more question number 2 if you are someone who does not hold any kind of innovation but you are you are someone who comes with your own sector expertise but you do not have a fixed idea maybe you are someone who are excellent in healthcare maybe you are someone who are excellent in fmcg you are someone who is excellent in agriculture right but what exactly you have to do is you have to uh, enter in your market right say for example healthcare enter into you know hospitals enter into diagnostic labs pathology labs pharmaceutical companies reach them ask them their problems right b2b b2c ask business organizations about their problems ask customers about their problem and then what kind of expertise you have through which you can actually solve their pain points that you have to see similarly priorities the problems matching with your skills whatever skills you have whatever skills you have do you have that capability to solve their pain point the the prioritized pain points that you have to see propose the solution with focus on that problem so whatever solution you will be proposing that should be based or that should be focused on their actual problem statement and there comes the third type of entrepreneur that is these are some th someone who does not have any kind of innovation who does not have uh, you know even the sector expertise but they have only the urge of business right but as a part of that apart from your product development knowledge apart from your you know the innovation knowledge what you really need to you know have expertise is into these segments right so sector specific knowledge or experience network team funds infrastructure management business management skills and technology skills this is something which you need to have now let's look into the ideation process how to find out the solution for the problem right so number 1 what important customer problem can you solve okay now this is the stage where you have already reached to your customer now you have a pain point the problem statements of your customer in your hand right remember the case study which we have seen like connecting reaching to the agriculture and asking the farmers what are their pain points or pain areas now you have a list of 100 problems so the question is how to find out the solution for this problem right so 
Number one, what important customer problem you can solve out of whatever hundred you have? How are you going to do it? Suppose, for example, if you have any problem statements, how exactly you are going to solve that particular problem, right? So that is something which you really, you know, uh, need to think like it can be possible or it, it, it cannot be possible to solve all the problems. But in that regard, you have that urge to solve that particular problem statement, right? How many customers are there that are willing to buy from you? Again, if the problem is genuine, if the problem is big, if the problem is urgent as well as important, then yes. The question is how many customers are there? Those who can actually buy from you. Based on that, you can actually consider or calculate your entire market size, right? For example, if this is the basic problem of farmer for which he can ready to pay me 300 rupees for per month, anything, I have devised a product which is solving their pain point. And for that matter, for that particular device, he is paying me 300 rupees per month. Now, you can actually calculate what is the market size of farmers. Is all these farmers are at tier 4, tier 3 or there are some in tier 2. Based on that you can calculate market size. And even though 1% of your market is actually purchasing your product, then what would be your revenue? See, this is how you have to calculate. Right? Not all engineers, sorry, not all farmers will buy your product. Not possible. But here, you have taken that probability like only 1% of the entire market size can actually utilize my product, right? So that it will help you to understand or to structure your revenue or revenue model. Why can only you provide the solution? Now, this is something which is related with your competitors, right? So whatever solutions you have, it may be possible like any of other competitors which are there in the market they may have a solution for it or maybe they particularly exist today with the same solution right so why can only you provide the solution what is your usp what is your x factor or what is the x factor of your own product or your innovation how can you defend against others right it is not always like you know uh, you can certainly consider all the competitors as competitors even you can utilize your competitors as collaborators how you can cross sell with each other maybe your product it falls into the same category but your usp is different your competitors usp is different so how you can defend against him and how big your idea is right so how big your idea is whether the market size is big or not okay say here i'll i can give you two examples right number one if your product is only for youngsters like 18 to 24 if your product is only for 18 to 24 youngsters at the age of uh, the age range of 18 to 24 product number one but say for example if you have something which can be used by anyone who are ranging from 18 to 65 right because we have the advantage of demographics here your market size will expand like anything so that's how how big is your idea if your idea is something which is a generalized product which can be used by anyone male female from metro from herbal from a village maybe from 18 year old kid maybe from 65 year old kid based on that you can decide how big your idea is then here comes design thinking yes so this is the diagram of design thinking there are five steps of design thinking now number one stage is empathize now what do you mean by empathize like we have already heard like empathy. Empathy is different, sympathy is different, right? Empathy is 
understanding people's emotion it is always said like you have to be in his shoes you have to be in her shoes to understand the intensity of that problem so that empathy should be there to understand the level of that problem if you are interacting with farmers it may happen like only farmer is actually sharing his problem statement and you are taking the notes of those problems this may or may not happen like you have uh, you know understood understood the intensity of that problem and likewise subconsciously you need to be at his position as a farmer your perspective or your perception should be like you have to see from the angle of farmers what exactly they are experiencing the challenge the problem so that empathy should be there number two you have to define your problem statement what exactly is the problem maybe this will happen like you will you know visit some 15 20 farmers or you will visit 15 20 even hospitals and at the end of the day you are you know coming up with only a random problem statements but the idea here is you have to define your problem statement so there uh, this problem statement canvas can help you in this regard i'll sh share you that as well now once you're done with defining your problem then then next is ideation so once you have cleared or defined all the problem statements then you have to ideate a solution a solution for those selective problems right whatever ideas you have in your mind you have you have to use few of the tools and softwares and everything and you have to create a prototype prototype is basically a, a working model which can be tested right so once you have done with your prototype then you have to test that product once you have tested again this entire process will recycle unless and until you get a perfect product now next is how to create a problem statement so this is a customer problem statement template here you can see this is this is actually a template right customer problem statement template here you have to just answer these simple questions right for example if you are on a visit of say farmers then through his perspective you have to answer these questions i am 41 years old farmer from this 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 location likewise so here you have to answer who are they who are they so you have to actually screen their demographics right now next is i am trying to so that farmer actually want to do something in his land but this is not happening maybe any kind of problem which is associated with farming so here you have to make a list of i am trying to do this 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 i am trying to trying to do this 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 next number three but now the second was i am trying to do this 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 but now i have to write down what are the barriers in order to accomplish my task these are my problems or these are my obstacles these are my barriers so list down the barriers because now because is very important where you have to put down your root cause so what exactly is your root cause just a minute i'll just plug the charger yes so because it's very important where you have to actually give them the root cause why this is happening right and then which makes me feel so through his or through your customer's point of view what kind of emotion they are having actually impact right because see empathy emotion see on a broader perspective 
you pick any business you pick a business of reliance you pick a business of geo you pick a business of oyo you pick a business of any even a small scale business the core of any business is a customer and the core of customer is his emotion right why someone is buying something because an emotion is attached to that particular product or process or service whatever it is right maybe a sense of satisfaction maybe a sense of convenience right maybe a sense of accomplishment so that is linked with emotion right and now this is something which can actually you can utilize so this is something which you can actually download right you can just type problem statement canvas right you will you know have this particular sheet so this is basically a ready reference for you where you have to just fill this particular information during your market survey right this is very important right what does the problem occur context what is the root cause of that problem what do customers do now to fix the problem what exactly alternatives are right now existing solutions right who has the problem most often who is your customer even in that case you can even bring down one more column like consumer many of the times what happens is your customer is different and your consumer is different to simplify this again i'll give you an example of byju's in case of byju's a customer is different and consumer is different customer is his parent consumer is the kid who is actually using byju's same is the case with diapers customers are different consumers are different customers are parents consumers are the one who is wearing that diaper babies and kids right so in your case it may be possible like your customer is different and your consumer is different what if if you are creating something which is for which payment is done by someone and the actual utilization is being done by someone so you need to figure out who is your customer who is your consumer maybe both are one and the same but at least you need to have that awareness through this particular survey right how does the customer feel emotional impact right now quantifiable impact what is the measurable impact and then what are the disadvantages of the alternatives so whatever alternatives right now he is using in existing solutions then what are the disadvantages of those particular alternatives right once you feel this you can then figure out with this particular problem statements defining a clear cut precise and accurate customer problem statement is very important is very important right then once you are done with your solution then you have to actually build your prototype right now i am not going to you know uh, share you exactly how to create a prototype because prototype again varies from sector to sector or element to element right so here as far as prototyping is concerned you have to build your product or build your prototype considering user in the mind again you have to think empathetically you have to be in his shoes when you try to build your prototype right number 2 remember what you are testing for what exactly the outcome should be whatever product you are creating whatever prototyping you are building what is your expected outcome from the product if someone is using your product what outcome he should get after its use right then don't spend too much time prototyping may takes you know few months because we see we have that uh, you know uh, a habit to do perfect or to have all things in perfect way but in case of prototyping within lesser time you can create a stuff you can create your working model just for testing purpose right and then you can start actual prototyping or or actual product development process and last just start building don't think too much just start building your prototype if today if you think like yes 
this is something which is a missing part of our market or this is something which is a missing part of our society and i can create this product through which this can be solved it can be anything but when you have this idea in mind immediately start building your product because there was one survey Sorry, there was a survey which was done at Silicon Valley where one of the magazine has asked a question to 100 startup founders. The question was, what is the secret behind your successful startup? Option number one. Is it your idea blockbuster idea? Number two, is it because you have received funding? Number three, is it because of your team and technology? And number four, number four, timing. 55% of startup founders they voted for fourth option that is timing. Timing is very important. That is why if you have something in your mind, start creating the prototypes. You connect immediately with your future customer, the people, and then based on their requirement, you have to start building your product, right? So this is basically a process, a reversible process of design thinking. So just to rewind this, empathize is basically you need to be in his or her shoes to understand the level or the intensity of that problem, right? Empathize to define the problem statement. Once you define the problem statement, then ideate a solution. Once you ideate a solution, then build a prototype right and once you are done with your prototype then you have to test your prototype right and then last types of innovations which i wanted to share you with you like this is not always like we need to have only product innovation it may happen like you may have innovation but not in product but it is in process right so product innovation process innovation and business model innovation so these are basically the types of innovation let's understand in detail product innovation here you can see the examples like solar power cold storage so the core cold storage which is powered by the solar powers west oil to biodiesel converter process innovation here you can consider an example of henry ford's you know uh, assembly line that is something which is world's first moving assembly line process innovation or Google's Google's innovation is Google offers its employees 20% free time from their work to focus on personal projects. And that's why today have they have results like Gmail, Google Maps, Google Talk and AdSense. The last one being responsible for almost 25% of Google's annual income. Because they could offer their employees free time, 20% of free time, their employees, they started, you know, innovating something new. You know, they, they got a booster for their creativity skills. And then they have a products like this, Gmail and Google Maps and AdSense. These were, you know, Google never expected these products, but this is because of their 20% free time, which they have given to their employees, right? Similarly, we have one more example, our very own example, uh, being a brand from Pune, we should include this as an example into process innovation. Chitre is Bakarwadi. So Bakarwadi could be the finest example of uh, process innovation because of your whatever innovations you have in your process. Now you can uh, directly manufacture 100% automated product. Likewise, right? So this is just an example of process innovation. Business model innovation, you can consider Airbnb. The OYO, which we have today in India, is the replica of Airbnb, Uber, and Paytm. These are few of the startups. Even Zomato, Swiggy, these are few of the startups, which you can consider as business model innovation, right? 
so these are three types of innovations like product innovation process innovation and business model innovation cloud kitchen is one more example where you can consider this as a business model innovation right even a uh, cloud kitchen where you have not innovated any kind of product or process but still cloud kitchen is something which have changed the business model of hotel industry or restaurant industry right so this is one more example as far as uh, business model innovation now let me ask you one question because anyways right now we are closing it uh, my question to you all is how paytm earns now you can you know even you can use your chat box to answer this how paytm earns what is the revenue model for paytm paytm or even you can consider swiggy or zomato how the companies like paytm or swiggy or zomato they earns you can answer your question in chat box because that is something which is related with your business model innovation through advertisements okay yes go on go on put on your answers They take a cut from service provided to companies. Okay, Prashant have Prashant have answered. Jay have answered. Charging merchants a transaction fee and consumers a convenience fee. Okay, good. Ankit. Yes, other participants, you can drop your answers right away in chat box. How Paytm earns? That's my question. Or similarly, how Zomato earns? Yes, yes, yes. Quick. You can drop your inputs. You can drop your answers here in chat box. Yes, that's it. Only if you have answered. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll discuss this. Okay. See, first of all, Paytm have multiple revenue streams. You should always remember that whatever business you start, maybe a startup, maybe a innovative business, maybe a traditional business, it can be anything, but you should always have multiple revenue streams. Multiple revenue streams. Now Paytm is basically have multiple revenue streams. Paytm earns from, as rightly said by many of the participants, like uh, the transaction fees or the commission or the cut which is being received from different vendors. Like if I if I'm booking a movie ticket of PVR, then through this particular I have to pay a transaction fees, right? Similarly, if I'm doing a UPI payment, then I may receive something from banks right so this is no doubt this is an uh, uh, absolute revenue stream but this is not their primary revenue stream this is their secondary revenue stream i'll tell you how exactly paytm earns right what is the revenue model of paytm okay so you if if you all have a paytm app then you may have at least 50 to 100 rupees on your Paytm wallet. Paytm wallet is basically the main source of revenue for your Paytm. Right? Why? Because Paytm wallet have, even if I have 50 rupees or 100 rupees on my Paytm wallet, then calculate the number of users around the country. Multiply by 50 or 100 rupees again multiply by 0.1 percent of interest rate because whatever money you have deposited or whatever money you can see on your paytm wallet it is not on your account it is on your wallet but it is a virtual wallet ideally the funds are on paytm accounts wallet so every day whatever collection 
whatever deposit amount they have on paytm wallet it is known as escrow accounts it is known as escrow accounts they basically get at least 0.1 percent hello yeah 0.1 percent interest on whatever amount they have on paytm wallet so this is how escrow account is basically their primary revenue stream and all other are secondary revenue streams right now to conclude with this particular session the most useful startup idea is one which you really love the most important part as i said earlier nobody will ask you your eligibility criteria your your educational qualification no no nobody is caring about if you really want to start a startup if you really want to be a part of entrepreneurship as a career then you need to start something which you are passionate about i'll tell you one more case study which was you know showcased during shark tank india whatever i don't know the episode name even i don't know the uh, name of that particular startup but these were from uh, three engineers one from i guess iit all three were from nasik and they have created a electric bike which can actually carry the business luggages and everything right so that is something which you can utilize as a transport bike right so that was something which you know uh, you can create out of your own passion if if at all you are not passionate about whatever you are doing even though you are doing a 9 to 5 job but you are not passionate about whatever job you are doing we need to uh, you know uh, at last we need to quit that particular option because you have to do what you really love right number 2 that solves a problem that drives you mad all your market you receive that particular advantage of your own sector then you should be always mad to solve that problem right when when we are into job it is a 9 to 5 job but when we are into entrepreneurship it is 24 by 7 into 365 days day and night in and out you always think about solving that pain point of the customer that kind of determination and dedication you have you have because you have that passion if you do not have passion this won't come that is why you need to have that drive to solve that pain point of the customer and last that you can produce on a larger scale you should not do or you should not start a stuff which you cannot scale right so scaling is very important unless and until you scale your business you there will not be any you know a difference between a traditional or a conventional business and your business and that is why you need to produce whatever products you are building on a larger scale right so these were all the final inputs from my end as far as your next startup journey is concerned so with this i conclude this session i'm once again thankful to the organizers members and participants for having me here for this particular session i hope whatever content we have seen today for this particular session uh, it may add value to your understanding or to you know whatever awareness you have for your uh, entrepreneurship mindset thank you so much thank you sir uh, participants do you have any question you may unmute and ask the questions yourselves or you may also put it in the chat box yes in case if you have any kind of questions you can just drop your questions So look, looks like we do not have any questions at the moment. Oh. 
So um, I'll proceed with the votive okay. plan. Okay, 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 fine. Um, first, I would like to request all the participants to fill up the feedback form. I'm sending the link in the chat box. Uh, so please fill up the feedback form. It is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. Sachin sir. Thanks a lot for sparing valuable time from your busy schedule, accepting this invitation and conducting this workshop for us. Uh, we got to lot, learn a lot. Especially that when we think of startups, we usually think of products or maybe processes, but you also told us and explained to us how even business models are startups and how we need to aim at solving existing problems. So thank you. I would also like to thank our principal, Dr. P.B. Mani, sir, and the Innovations Incubation Entrepreneurship Development Cell of our college for organizing this workshop. Thank you. Thank you all.